All right, so um, I just kind of want to introduce to you the next little in-class project you will be doing with a partner, um, and it involves this program called GMAPGIS.com, and GIS just stands for Geographic Information Systems. It's just a fancy way of saying you have different map layers, and you can show different things with each layer. Um, so with this little project, you'll be working on it with a partner, and you will be addressing these two Iowa standards. Um, so like, keep in mind, these are the things that would be yellow on the chalkboard. So the first one is just to know how to use geographic tools to analyze information about places and environments. That's exactly what we're going to do with this. The second thing is one we've touched base on quite a bit lately, is just looking at how geography affects history. And your goal here really is, um, depending on when you're listening to this, um, either tomorrow or the day before, depending on when you listen to this, you will have completed the pink sheet, the pink flowchart sheet in class um, on pages 20 through 23 in your textbook. And that just shows you the ripple effects of agricultural revolution, how farming literally created civilization and all the things we have today. But your question really should be, after doing that pink sheet, is where was the first civilization? So obviously, obviously it's in the Middle East, but you're going to actually use um, an atlas in class, and you're going to use this website, GMAP GIS, to show me and prove to me where you think the first civilizations developed. And you're going to explain to me why you think they developed there. What does, and here we go again, geography have to do with the development of civilization. And with geography, we're not talking about animals or plants anymore. We're talking about physical geography, the stuff that's on the Earth's surface. So there's kind of three parts to this little project. Um, and like I said, you'll use the atlas in class. And you will actually also use, let's see if I can pull it up here. Mm, I cannot pull it up right now. But you'll check out GMAP GIS on the next video. But your first thing, let's look at the middle box here. The middle part of your rubric that I've just highlighted. You're going to identify five factors as to why civilization developed in the Middle East, wherever you think it developed. So the first criteria is just supporting your factor or your claim with evidence. You have to develop and strengthen your claims with relevant, well-chosen facts, details, and evidence. Basically, all that means, it's a fancy way of saying, have you um, used evidence for your answers? We spent a whole day last week on what I call provancering. There's a difference between answering and proving what you know, showcasing exactly what you know, kind of being real cocky about what you know. So that's what I would like you to do, is you're going to give me five factors explaining where the first civilization developed. So let's look here at your top score, three points. Students have proven their reasoning as to why the first cities and civilization developed in an area by providing specific details and evidence. you got to show me what you know. You have to back it up with proof. Make me believe that you know what you're talking about. I don't want you to just identify the factor, but also elaborate as to why that factor allowed civilization to develop there. So if you tell me the first civilization developed in Afghanistan by a river, that's not enough. You need to tell me, well, why is that important? How does that help civilization develop there? How does that tie into farming? What do people use the river for? So you have to go beyond just saying there's a river in Afghanistan. Okay, your second box. You've pointed out your factor, but you can do a better job of supporting the claim. You're not quite provancering. You're not showing me everything you know. Then finally, point one point, you're just telling me the factor. So like you're just saying there's a river in Afghanistan and I think civilization started there. Well, you're not telling me anything. Tell me why you think that. Why was a river important for civilization? What was it used for? What did the people need it for? Why didn't they go somewhere else? So you have to really go beyond just saying what you think it is. 
so I actually need five of those. You'll do the same thing to explain why civilization did not develop in different areas of the Middle East. So this is part two of your little project. You're just telling me why it did not develop in other places. Again, you need to support your claim with evidence. You need to have well-chosen facts, details, and evidence. You need to prove answer, not answer. Prove to me that you know exactly what you're talking about. Prove to me that you understand how geography affects um, the development of civilization and cities. Right? So again, same thing here. You get three points for each factor if you are provancering. You're giving me evidence. You're going above and beyond. Um, you're really showcasing what you know and what you think. Two points if you're nah, so-so. You give me the factor, but you can do a better job of supporting your claim. One point if all you do is tell me there was no civilization in Saudi Arabia because there's a desert. That's one point. You haven't told me anything about the desert. So again, I actually need five of those. And this is just the first page of your rubric. The back page will be a spot where you see how it says factor two, factor three, factor four, factor five. That Those are where it developed, where it developed. So this, oh man, what did I do there? Um, hold on one sec, I gotta pause. Okay, sorry. So this whole second page here will go actually with this middle part. So the first part of your project, which is explaining where civilization did develop. Your third page, so here's your second page, da -da -da -da. third page with the funky font, it's a little bit different. Those are the other spots where I'm going to grade your other four factors for telling me where civilization did not develop and why. So that's just kind of what those back two pages are for. Um, when you are explaining and provancering, obviously I need at least five factors for both where civilization and where civilization did not develop. Okay, So that's ten total. You must use at least three maps for each part. For each part, you must use the land cover map in your atlas. You have no choice or you have to use it. I want you to use that one. That one will help you a lot. But you can use other maps more than once. So if you want to use a rainfall map on both parts, you can. If you just want to use it on one part, that's fine too. But you've got to use three maps for both parts. And when, I, when you watch the next video, I'll actually show you how you're going to point out your factors. You're going to um, draw on a map. You're going to create shapes on a map. You're going to shade things in. You're going to use labels. So it's going to help me see what your factors are. And finally, the last part of your little project is just submitting your project. Okay, So let's take a quick run through through that. Um, down in the bottom corner of your map, you're going to actually make a little label, kind of like a sticky note, and you're going to write your period number and both student names. Then you're going to save it as a link, then copy and paste it to a sticky note on the period's Lino site. And those can actually be found on the Classroom Assignments and Activities page on Abby's website. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. They will be found on the Useful Links page on my website. Let me change that real quick. Useful links page on my website. Okay, I'm going to pause real quick and make sure I have those correct and I'll show you those. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so again, you're going to actually submit, you're going to label your map with your name and your period number. You'll be with a partner, so I need both names. Then you're going to copy and paste it onto the Lino site. And that is under useful links. So what you're actually going to do is you will end up on my useful links page here. Then you'll go to your period. Let's say you're in period four. This funky little website. It's like a sticky note website will pop up. And you have your instructions for how to turn in your assignment right here. And I will show you how to do that on the other video too. Okay. Um, two points. 
if you submit it on a sticky note, but you screw up the label, or I just I just can't find your names. And then two points is the lowest you can go because it's impossible to turn in the assignment if you don't do this part right. Okay, cool. So again, um, please keep in mind this rubric is like your roadmap to success. I am telling you exactly what I want you to do in this rubric. If you follow this rubric and check your work with the rubric, you're guaranteed an A+. Plus because I'm showing you exactly what you need. It's like the keys to a door or it's a map. You can't go somewhere you've never been to without a map. This is your map. So please, please pay attention to this. Ask me questions if you need to. Um, and make sure you watch the second video so I can show you how to use GIS map.